yesterday. They posted a video. They were uh, charging a TV with in a TV frame with subwoofers. They can do all kinds of things for you, from home theater setup to adjusting your thermostat or monitoring your security systems from your cell phone. Integrated media is the company that you need to call. So call Nathan and Michael at 803 948 8327. That's 803 948 8327. Or you can reach them online at integratedmediainc.com. That's online at integratedmediainc.com. Hey, first we probably get to meet you. I'm Ernest. Good to see you, man. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Ernest. I told him because I live off the sixth green. Okay. You know, when you turn it over and cross the seventh, sixth green, and then the second key box is right yeah. there. I said, perfect place to set up the grand heckle hole. <laughs> and you can hear heckle from your back porch. Yeah. And if you didn't know, the guy from uh, Happy Gilmore that used to do it, he actually passed away the other day. Did he really? I didn't. Nice to meet you, Game Cock, Larry. All right. Nice to meet you, sir. Thank you for your service. Okay. I'll, I'll be I'll be happy with that. You said seven, right? I said seven. It's gonna be tight. Just a little nervous. And, and if I'm looking for the retribution circle because uh, I say the retribution circle because you gotta go back. We lost to Iowa. Iowa lost to LSU. Oh, this year it's going backwards. I will beat LSU. We're going to beat Iowa. Okay, I the like it. I, I like it. I like it. I'm ha however, it gets done. I just, I just want to get past this, this one tonight. We can get past this one tonight. I feel pretty. I feel pretty calm. Is there anything you want to do? Freshman, Thompson. Let's go with. Let's go with the freshman. Good uh, seeing you. Let's see here, Jen. All right, Jen, I got a, I got, I got something going on the live stream here. Y'all can't hear the uh, the radio, can you? You can only hear us. I think is is a brand new. I don't totally different. I have no idea what's. I do really don't even know where we're live streaming at. To be dead honest, yeah, that's what I thought. Correct, just us. Gotta remember to put y'all mute during the during the break. All right, we're back. Okay, call for some Lonnie Teasley here. I think we're. Thank you. 
We're rolling along live here, 634 on your Friday morning from Charwood Golf Club, where I can look out and see the sun slowly starting to rise over there over the trees as we get you up and get you going. The 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament. I uh, already am counting down the minutes until we can get that onion sausage on the grill and going. It'll be a 10 a.m. shotgun start out here. Rock and Daniel Lucas. So get us going and we will enjoy another fantastic golf tournament here. Again, big thank you to everybody who is a part of putting this on today from Old Timey Meat Market and their onion sausage to, of course, uh, Firehouse Subs for their lunch that they'll give us later today. Camp Discovery will be out here and we will have all kinds of neat things. of a bourbon raffle going on. Charwood is our home away from home. We appreciate that. Saki's Wine and Spirits off a mimosa bar. So, uh, we've got a lot going on. Gamecock Larry has made his way out here this morning and his uh, predicted victories tonight. Who did you predict uh, in the second game? I missed that one. Iowa or Connecticut? Big guy, you going Connecticut? Connecticut by four is his call. He is calling. So if you want to call your bookmaker this morning or call out the Vegas or whomever, uh, Connecticut by four, and they are they are the underdogs. So he's saying Connecticut money line take plus money tonight uh, is Gamecock Larry's prediction. Yesterday, Coach Lonnie Teasley talked to the media. One of the things he talked about was his freshmen. You've had three freshmen that have rolled early this uh, this spring. You got Josiah Thompson, who's the big name, Cam Pringle, who's the truly big guy, and you got Blake Franks, three in-state freshman linemen who have uh, enrolled. Here's what Lonnie Teasley had to say yesterday about his freshman. What do you think? Freshman here early on, Josiah Thompson is drawing uh, a lot of, is gaining, is getting a lot of attention, I should say, drawing praise uh, so far. Big fella, obviously, the the centerpiece, a lot of people would say, five-star recruit of the, of the recruiting class as a whole, not just the offensive line class, but somebody asked a great question, uh, I believe on our live stream the other day, I believe it was David on our live stream, asked a phenomenal question. What do you think is the tougher jump, from high school to college or college to pro? For a, for, a, for a first, you know, for that first year, making that jump going from the high school ranks to the college ranks as a freshman or the, the college ranks to the professional ranks as a rookie. Uh, for specifically for linemen, I think the bigger jump is from high school to college. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, because when you're in high school, the, the size and talent disparity is so wide. If you're Cam Pringle and you're playing at Woodlands High School. You're not seeing many other Cam Pringles. <laughs> you, you've never seen somebody your size on, on a football field. And so a lot of times offensive linemen, or defense linemen for that matter, you can push guys around without with little or no technique, maybe even without a lot of effort. And unless you're a truly special guy, once you get to the college level, as Lonnie just talked about, you're going to have to figure out some of your tech more, more technique-wise. So I think that's probably the bigger job. You, you look at this line. Preston, and uh, there is experience there. Ja'Kai Moore is back. Rashawn Lee is back. Uh, you know, again, you kind of go down the line. Uh, Travon Ball played a good bit last year. Tree Babalade played a good bit last year. Uh, uh, Marquis Anderson is a guy who, I guess, didn't play very much because of the injury. But how fair is it to ask Josiah Thompson to come in and be an immediate impact player here on this line? Uh, I would say that's a, that's a big ask for that particular position. I mean, when you recruit a five-star lineman, very rarely is it that you're hoping that he's going to come in and start and contribute immediately. But if he has to, what you'll see is Freddie, he'll be similar to what Tree did last year. They'll be good at one thing or the other. Either you'll be more susceptible, more apt to be a, a pass blocker guy because you have your feet and you're a better athlete, or you're just ultra aggressive and you're really good in the run game, but you need to work on the pass. So what is usually worse for a freshman is that they're more their natural talents lean towards either run or pass block. 
And, you know, for South Carolina, again, the line of scrimmage, really, I go back again to your days. And that was just, it felt like, of course, I was in college. You had to actually go against them. Uh, but I, it, it felt like a mean, nasty group that set the tone for that particular turnaround going from 0-11 to 8-4 and then 9-3. Yeah, I mean, those guys were those guys were very much fundamental and technique technique based. I, I can't even say that they were a big a bunch of big mean nasties even when they were playing. Yeah, you, you thought of you thought of yeah. Labrador retrievers. Like, yeah, the, the linemen are more they were more Labrador retrievers. Some of those guys ah, not super tough dudes, but always very focused, always very fundamentally sound and would just play would execute their assignments. And because that is something that we is very much underrated as a skill for our offensive line is being able to know your assignment, execute your assignment, and play with all-out effort. That can take care of a lot of things. I think when you heard the critiques for the offensive line for the past two years, I think the effort was there. These guys are trying, um, but there was a lot of lack of execution uh, on those sides. One thing that's a lot different than when you played now is transfers. And, Jen, we've got that cut, number 27. South Carolina, one of the guys that you've talked about is Torricelli Simpkins. Transferring in from North Carolina A T, played for a good buddy of yours, uh, Cedric uh, uh, Williams. Williams. Let's listen to uh, Coach Lonnie Teasley yesterday talk about transfers that have that have come in and how they're performing this spring. Of course, he's referring to Kamar Bell there, 6'10", 300, 6, 6, 10, 6, 2, 310 pounds, graduate student from Florida Atlantic, uh, Aaron Parks, 6'4", 320 from Oklahoma, and then uh, Torricelli Simpkins from North Carolina a and uh, When people get cross-trained in these positions, your thoughts on that? Uh, is it is it asking a little bit too much? Would you prefer to just say, okay, you're a right guard, stick there? Is it? I get I get the benefits of having a guy who can play right guard, center, tackle. Vershawn Lee has played center. He's played tackle. They moved him out to tackle last year against Florida. It seemed to work. Then he got injured. Your thoughts though on cross training these guys instead of just saying you're here, focus on this. I like I like cross training at this point in the year. In the spring, I think everybody should be doing everything. That way, we can gather as much data as possible and figure out. Where are you best? Now, I don't like having all of those options going into the season. In August, I need for you to lock be in. Yeah, let's lock something in by August. But for the spring, try some things out. That means that there probably will be a lot of busted plays. Things won't work. And as a coaching staff, you have to have the confidence to let that play out and let things develop. Because what happens is you get a little nervous. And you're like, all right, let's just put our best guys in the best spot so we don't look bad. But you have to use the spring to experiment, try and figure out what works best for everybody. 803-404-6100. We are live from Charwood Golf Club, Rock and Daniel Lucas in having us out here for the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament. We'll roll along. Sun slowly creeping up, easing into what should be a really fun day, a great weekend. We'll talk more about that. And uh, uh, Sterling Lucas, uh, what did he do? Just, just be careful, Sterling. Be careful, Sterling. I know what you were trying to do, and I don't know if we have the sound yesterday. But just be careful, Sterling. We'll let Preston just explain. Be careful. We'll let him explain. You're listening to Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne, Jen Jensen. It is the early game. <coughs> Y'all all right? Maggie, you good? This is Maggie. Yeah. How long have you been with us? 
I gotta go catch a fight and clean. Catch your seat on where I'm going to clean.
people have an identity as a defense. We tried to be multiple last year, but what we actually figured out was that we were only good in one defense, and that was a 3 3 5. Right. Even though we tried to do a bunch of things, at the end of the year, we played one defense. And I I like for defenses to have a ability. Now, you can adjust and adapt, but I need you to be able to start with one thing. But it's the, it's the spring, so let's, let's work out some kinks. Right, and it, it kind of goes to what I was saying about just it, it being quiet, just to keep everything kind of quiet. Real quick, Jen, let's listen to one other thing from Coach Lucas before we get into uh, the alma mater and what Preston needs to warn him about. One of the big guys that, that everybody wants to know about is Dylan Stewart, five-star recruit that South Carolina landed yesterday. Coach Sterling Lucas talked about the dy- the <laughs> dynamic of the new guys, but also his observation of Dylan Stewart. Here's what he had to say. Just smile. Preston, just smile. You go to our live stream, go to the game TV, and you can see Preston just smile when he said the paces. Yeah, that means Dylan has his eyes wide open. He's like, whoa, <laughs> okay, all right. You guys are moving fast from drill to drill. What's happening here? Uh, and that happens for freshmen. You just, no matter what high school you come from, you're not prepared for the amount, the intensity at a practice, at a college practice. You're just not prepared for it. How different is the intensity in the spring practice versus the fall practice? I would say they're pretty close. I would yeah. say they're pretty close. Spring is very close, very much close to um, training camp or whatever you would have. Fall camp, I know I know you're not a fan of that. Um, but It's not fall. Yes, I know you're not a fan there of is, that. There is no such thing yeah. really as fall. <laughs> but then when you say summer camp, that sounds fun, and it's not fun. So I don't know what you want to call it. But there is an intensity level. And it's just, and again, if you – unfortunately, we've moved to the where – we're not allowed to see for folks to go and see practices because I think people would gain a better appreciation for what Shane and his staff does because they're moving a million miles per hour. There's all these moving parts. People are doing different things in different places. And as a high schooler, remember, as I said, these guys are supposed to be in high school. You're not used to seeing that. Uh, the best high school practices still have a lot of standing around because there's just not as many, many hands on deck. So that just – that made me smile a little bit because I'm sure there's a couple of times where Dylan's like, what? Where are we supposed to be? Oh, yeah. Just following yeah, somebody. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like he just puts his hand on his shoulder and gets taken somewhere. Like, like a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a kindergarten. All right, Dylan, come on. Here we go. Um, yeah, so that, that's that's really interesting. But it's good to hear that once he does put his hand down and figures out if it's just the football part that he's being successful right now. 803-404-6100, how you can weigh in. So uh, about a minute here, but Sterling Lucas did Yeah, work. Sterling, you just got to be very careful. I know what you're trying to do. You tried to be diplomatic. He came in there early. He was answering questions. Oh, yeah, that's right. If he's from NC State, I, I just put all of it yeah, together. Yeah, he tried to be diplomatic. He's like, you know, I want to give a shout-out to the, the, the women Gamecocks out there. And then he's like, you know, best luck in their Final Four tonight. And then he tried to slide in right behind him. He was like, and also my alma mater, NC State, the men and women. I'm just going to tell you, Sterling, Look at that big paycheck when it comes on the first and fifteenth. Look, look at the top left corner. Yeah, and, and it doesn't see. say it doesn't say NC State on it. So just know where your bread is buttered, sir. At least for this week. We'll continue on this morning live from Charwood Golf Club. We get the onion sausage ready, the mimosas, the firehouse subs. Can't Discovery is going to be out here. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll continue on. You're listening to the early game. Did Jerome Tang get hired, or was that fake? The what? Jerome Tang. What about him? For Arkansas. Bill Gunner for the mortgage guru. Jacob Crowder with First Palmetto Bank. I tell you what, Jacob has been the mortgage guru in this market, and I can attest to that because not too long ago, he helped me. That's right. Four years ago, he helped get a great interest rate, helped with all the paperwork, did all the necessary things that you would expect from Jacob Crowder. And now with First Palmetto Bank, he's doing it even better because they're locally owned and operated right here in the Midlands. That means he has local decision makers 
helping with a quick and precise underwriting. So things such as if you're thinking about building a home, they have a no-nonsense construction loan that will fit your needs. So call the Mortgage Guru today, 803 713-719-1005. Five Jacob Crowder again is ready to help you and your family, and so is First Palmetto Bank. The new year is here, and if you're looking to buy or refinance, Jacob will get you taken care of. So again, give him a phone call 803-719-1005. He's the mortgage guru, Jacob Crowder with First Palmetto Bank. All good? Yeah. That's what I was just talking about. It, it kind of depends. That's yours. Uh, it kind of depends. Probably maybe about the 8 o'clock hour. But I'll be honest. He's wearing shorts. And I hate the cold. <laughs> so uh, it'll be a it'll be kind of like a during a break. Hey, let's do it. And if not, we'll be good right here. But if so, we'll just move right over that porch like we did previously. Everything should be good and charged. She's got. I understand that. I'd like to go get in the. I'd like to go lay in my bed right now if I could. I'm ready to. Good to see you. I'm glad you made it out. Go get yourself some. I love you. We're always remember that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you just, you, I know it's good to get out sometimes. You just want to get out. And... It is, bro. It is, bro. It is a, especially coming down that road, it's pitch black coming down, coming down the road to get back in. I've never been right here, man. I feel like I know it's Yeah, it's a, it's, it's real dark when you're coming back to here now. Yeah. I think we got Chris Deary for like one second. Oh, I know. Okay. I mean. Well, live from Charwood Golf Club, the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament is just three hours away. 10 a.m. is when we'll get started. Preston Thorne will hit the ceremonial opening tee shot probably in about an hour and a half. And you can go to the game TV and we'll probably try to live stream that so that you can get a full view of Preston Thorne. Starting things off here at Charwood Golf Club, big thank you as always to Rock and Daniel Lucas for having us out. The staff here, always fantastic for us. Mason's out here getting things going. Uh, we're uh, one of, I believe, our 
our our our promotions director maybe or our setup uh, girl Maggie has uh, gotten the table set up for us and the system and the sound and done a great job as well. And Rock and Daniel have got the weather nice and and warm today. I believe it's supposed to get into the high sixties. It's about fifty is what I saw right now on my phone. So we are sitting comfortably inside, but looking forward to some onion sausage from Old Timey Meat Market here in just a short while. Mimosa Bar sponsored by Saki's Wine and Spirits. Firehouse Subs, look forward to seeing them today. They'll have some sandwiches for us for lunch. We'll have Camp Discoveries going to be out here. Look forward to talking with them. They'll have a putting competition going on and a bourbon raffle. So we've got a lot going on today, Preston Thorne. And golf. Just for a second, uh, golf making some headlines. John Rom, Phil Mickelson, uh, some of the live guys now saying, and and the PGA guys saying, man, we got to get this thing straight. We're losing, we're losing fans, losing interest. And I got to admit, I love golf, and I this year more than ever, I've been kind of. We'll see how next week goes as we get the Masters going. I'm interested personally for me to 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 see how I feel next week about the Masters with golf being in the state that it currently is. I think that's very interesting um, because we can't, you can't just rely on the big 10 event to gauge the health of the sport because there's so there's every 51 other weeks in the year when they have these other tournaments. And so I think this is really interesting because people are going to show up for the masters. People are going to pay attention to the masses, but what happens for the rest of the events? And to be honest, the PGA and live folks have only really done this to themselves. It's not yeah. for any other reason than for they couldn't, they could not figure out a way to make this thing work. I it's, it's really, again, I'll, I'll be the next two weeks in particular because it's the masters and this, the heritage to see how we feel. But yeah, I mean, even, I think they're seeing it. I always wonder for John Rom because Preston, you can speak to this more as a college athlete and, and being at a bigger level than I ever dreamed of being. But some of it is you enjoy the attention, that ego, that crowd, you run out. And John Rahm has gone from playing in, in front of thousands upon thousands of people in these huge events. His bank account is very, very nice. But if you've ever seen one of these live events, the crowds are not the same. It's not the same. It is not the same. You're not playing on that tour for the, the celebrity status, if you will. You're playing because you got paid $300 million. You're, you're financially set. But it is got to be a little bit of a blow to the ego when you go out there, and it's just not the same kind of atmosphere, electric atmosphere that some of these some of these tournaments provide. That's a great point. That's a great point because when an athlete says, oh, "You know, I would, I would, I wouldn't, I don't do this for the money," that's not true. They do it for money. However, most athletes would do it for a lot less money because you really love being in the arena. You love the competition aspect of. It. If they just wanted to go play, they would go to their local course and go play golf. Right. The point is you want to compete and really you want to compete in front of other people, show them how good you are. And yeah, your account, your bank account is great, but there's, that gets boring after a while, you know? So I don't know. I think that's a really interesting aspect because they want to play against the, they want to play against the best and they're currently not playing against the best. And so. Well, there, uh, you look at it, uh, there's some really good golfers there, but again, to me on the live tour, it's, it's just, I don't know if saying what are you playing for is the right word, but I think it's it's kind of like you you you've got the money, you're you're very excited about your money, but it's not the same same kind of deal. It, it is just an entirely different setup, and and I wonder what that does is, is you start playing like you go out there and you think, man, I'm going to change, I'm going to get more people, millions are going to follow, well, millions don't follow, and you're playing these tournaments. And again, I I've seen some of these these live golf events. You go from having maybe your hole completely ringed with fans to maybe 60 or 70 around there. <laughs> you know, you hear somebody's conversation that they're having about yeah. you, they're like, oh, look at, look at John's pants today. You're like, man. <laughs> look at his calves because they wear shorts. Like, yeah. Look at his ankles. He's, yeah. oh, he, he yeah. needs to lotion up a little bit. Wow. Right. I don't know if that's what you really want to do. You never want to be able to actually point to individuals yeah. in the crowd when it's not a crowd. It's just a gathering of people. I'm interested to see where, where that goes. They're going to have to figure this out. Um, and I just don't think you can gauge the health of the sport based on the marquee event because that's going to be great regardless, but there's all the other events in between. So that'll be next week. The Masters will get going. Heritage will follow that, but this week is all about this tonight, today, 
uh, all about the final four. And South Carolina gets going tonight, 11 and a half point favorite freshman born. We kind of brought it up an hour, number one. Is it the fear of how do, how do without putting NC State down, although I'm pretty sure they're not listening? Is it the fear of the opponent not being as big a name as you or not having the cachet that playing an LSU or a, a Caitlin Clark or even a Tennessee? Because I feel like that's part of it. I feel like that's part of it. South Carolina looks at NC State and like, Man, we've, we've done away with them multiple times over the last few years. We've absolutely destroyed them. This is a little bit different. South Carolina is better than NC State. However, South Carolina was better than Iowa last year. But they ran into an Iowa team that was just in the middle of doing something very special. I hope that this is the end of NC State's run, as it should be. It was nice Cinderella, like you said, but go on home now. Um, please, please remove yourself from the yeah, conversation. Yes, yes. It, was, it was fun while it lasted. I just hope we're not running into a team that's in the middle of doing something really, really special. There's yeah. no way. There's no way we're. They're not overlooking them. It's not as if because we ha we have the evidence of what happened last year. We get that. So it's not going to be that case. Best case scenario, both teams play their absolute best game. South Carolina wins by ten. However, I don't. Know. You know, I want to go back uh, last year uh, to the Iowa game because this came up a little bit yesterday uh, when I was out at uh, another golf tournament that I was participating in, and we were discussing this. Caitlin Clark last year had 41 points in that game. Uh, she was she was 15 of 31, which for her is actually wildly efficient uh, at times. But she was only 5 of 17 in that game. They were only 7 of 23 from three-point range. But one thing that has completely changed, that has completely evolved for South Carolina, is that this year they can shoot the ball better. Last year in that game, you see that number there? Four of 20 from three-point range. Four of 20 was what South Carolina was last year in that loss to Iowa as Iowa packed it in. Zaya Cook had 24 in the loss last year. You had Raven Johnson with 13. This is a differently built team this year in terms of shooting the three. But one other thing that's kind of interesting, in the previous game, South Carolina was four of twenty from three point range. Yeah, so maybe hopefully they got that out of their system. I don't. Hopefully they won't shoot that bad. Uh, Tahina Papa was off last last game, and they, they missed some of those shots. Also, as I look at the roster from last year, this team has more people who can get their own shots. Yep. And they have more people who can make the perimeter. So I think it's an overall better team on the Crazy offensive side, right? which is weird. To, yeah, it's really strange to say, but on the offensive side, it's a better team. Individually, they can get their own shots, and then if they do throw it down and pack in the post on Camilla, they can make shots. I say all that to say, yes, they are a better team. Everything, they righted the wrongs. Because yesterday I said, Dawn got exposed a little bit last year. That team got exposed, and it was just a matter of when it was going to happen, and they exposed them by playing that, I would call it a junk defense, but they played a junk defense, and we could not make any shots um, to counteract that. That will not be the case this week. No, and tonight, if they do that, the game should be over pretty quick. Well, that and given that we obviously will look ahead a little bit just because we won't do a show uh, prior to, to Sunday if they do indeed win tonight and get the championship. But you look ahead to that, yeah, whether it's Connecticut or whether it's Iowa. Again, it feels like this team is designed, as is created in a better sense to handle whatever Iowa may try and do. And if you let Caitlin Clark, if that is indeed who they get on Sunday, it, if I just you want to see that Iowa stats real quick. Go back to Iowa. Yeah. Um, all right. But yeah, if you if you go back to last year, this is you are more designed to be able to handle uh, Caitlin Clark going for 41. But you see the other numbers here. One other young lady had 18 in that game and then you had seven, five, four, and two. And that's how you have to beat if it is indeed Iowa. And again, we'll kind of glance ahead because we won't do a show prior to Sunday's championship game if indeed South Carolina's there. But that is how you have to stop Iowa. You basically say, all right, Caitlin, go for as many as you want. Just don't outscore us by yourself. Yeah, make her shots really, really difficult. If she makes some circuit shots or low low threes, you live with those. You don't let her get to the basket and get easy buckets. You don't, as LSU, you don't go under screens and let her shoot threes uncontested. Make every shot hard and make her be – the great player that she is. And, and again, it, it, the, the key, last year, 41 points, 8 assists. You think back to the other night when they beat LSU, 41 points, 12 assists. Don't allow her to to impact the game in that manner. 803-404-6100. That's how you can 
weigh in. We'll catch up with Chris Deering when we come back. Got a lot going on this morning. We are out here live at Charwood Golf Club getting geared up for the spring 107.5 The Game Golf Tournament. Look forward to seeing a lot of y'all out here. I see our head chef has showed up. Oh, okay, he says he's not the head chef. All right. That's <laughs> 803-404-6100. We are patiently waiting on those onion sausages from Old Timey Meat Market Firehouse Subs with their sandwiches today. Camp Discovery will be out here today. We'll have a little putting competition going on. Get yourself on out of here. If you've got a team lined up, come on out. Start hitting out on the range. Let's get things going as we are live from Charwood Golf Club. Rock and Daniel Lucas taking care of us. You're listening to the early game. I just figured you handled everything out here. You got Eric, Eric coming to cook? You ready? I got, I got that for you. Preston here, let me tell you about our friends at Integrated Media. It's time to get yourself ready. The spring is here. And we've been telling you all year that this is the time that you needed to get ready for. So what do you need to do? Well, call the folks at Integrated Media. You can do all kinds of things. You can get Samsung Terrace TVs, waterproof. Sonos outdoor speakers for TV and music, Wi-Fi that works indoors and outdoors. That way you can have all your devices working inside, outside, wherever you want to work. And if you have all the devices, Integrated Media will help you control all those devices from just one remote. So from home theater setup to adjusting your thermostat or monitoring your security systems from your cell phone, Integrated Media is the company that you need to call. So call Nathan and Michael at 803-948-8327. It's 803-948-8327. Check them out online at integratedmediainc.com. That's online at integratedmediainc.com. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. <coughs> That's why I rely upon Carolina Drug Grass and Landscape Supply in Lakes. Give a phone call today instead of fertilizer and weed control. But it's specific for your Get a full discount when you mention me, no matter at 1075 So call Carolina people. I go from day to know.
Uh, that's the uh, baseball side of it. Let's flip over to soccer, where yesterday they wrapped up the Nike Palmetto Cup going on that took place over at Saluda Shoals Park. Uh, you had a really good setup there. You had two different divisions, the Palmetto Division and the Crescent Division. Crescent had Aiken, Gaffney, T.L., Hannah, and St. James. Palmetto Division has Blythewood, Gray, Collegiate, Hanahan, and Westside. What can you tell us about the Nike Palmetto Cup that took place over at Saluda Shoals? Chris Deering joining us as he does each and every Friday for the high school highlights of the week. Uh, let's transition into a little bit of softball now. And as we head toward the stretch run in the playoffs, give us some of the top players in the Midlands that you uh, that you wanted to highlight. Yeah, softball, obviously, kind of kind of odd with uh, not as many spring break tournaments for them. I know you mentioned last week, and let's just kind of recap, is, again, stretch run coming up for baseball. Some of the players that you'll be watching, uh, not only throughout the Midlands, but obviously in the Florence and Grand Strand area as well. As well.
Chris, we always appreciate it. Again, like I said, we'll get more into some softball and highlight some young ladies next week. We'll also start to look ahead to the playoffs. Unbelievable. Next week we'll be hitting the mid mid uh, mid portion of April. Unbelievable that we're here. I feel like just the other day we were starting in August. And before you know it, we'll be back into August. But we always appreciate your contributions here on the High School Highlights of the Week. That's, that's the goal. That's the goal, Preston. When you when you Preston's got the ceremonial opening tee shot in about an hour. Can I get it? Can I guarantee either one of us? <laughs> we'll stand behind it, Chris. I, I was going good. Good, Chris. Take care. Good speaking with you. Have a great weekend. Take care, Chris Deering. As always, the high school highlights of the week. Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne. Yes. It's a good question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. I've been talking. I've been talking about it. We'll see. There's a lot of people. Cell cell phones are prevailing these days. People record stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. Eight zero three four zero four sixty one hundred. We'll answer the hard questions. Uh, Eric Musman off to Southern Cal. We'll talk about that. Preston Norton's all for bringing people back. We'll talk about it. You're listening to the early game. Bill Gunner for the men's clinic here in South Carolina. Dr. Dan Balknight, I tell you what, with over 20 years of experience taking care of men, he is ready to help you. He's helping restore the prime in men because as we turn 40, you know, things start to change. Bodies are just changing. You might be having mood swings right now. You might be losing weight or gaining weight. You're not real sure why. You might have brain fog. A lot of people would have testified for me that I have brain fog. A lot of people tend to forget things. That's why... <laughs> Yes, as you hear the producer sneeze in the background, you know, it's situations like that where you need to speak with Dr. Dan Balknight. You can line up an appointment today with the men's clinic, 803-875-MENS, because Dr. Dan Balknight realizes you are an individual and you need an individualized treatment specifically for you. So call today. You can get a free testosterone test, 803-875-MENS. Call the men's clinic today. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're pretty open. Um, let me uh, do something real quick here. Um,
735 as we are live from Charwood Golf Club where the first onion sausage, uh, the onion roll-ups or wraps for the bread sausage. They have been delivered. I've been talking about them for weeks. Thank you to Old Timey Meat Market, a uh, proud sponsor today out here at, one of, at the 107 Game Spring Golf Tournament. We have the onions. We have our first batch of onion sausage roll-ups ready for us, and that's why you are snacking on air. We apologize profusely but they're delicious and, uh, so you can come on out as well 107.5 the game spring golf tournament live today from charwood country club again thank you to everybody involved old timey meat market for again donating the sausage thank you to firehouse subs who will be out here later on the day with lunch uh the sandwiches and of course uh sake sake's wine and spirits who is sponsoring the mimosa bar that we will have set up outside camp discovery should be out here in just a little while they'll be raffling off some bourbon. We got a lot going on out here today. Thank you again, as always, to Rock and Daniel Lucas for their hospitality and hosting us out here as uh, we do each and every spring. There will be another tournament. We will get you more information. We will have our next tournament coming up in August as we do kind of the free football tournament, if you will. Uh, that one will be set for one of the last weekends in August, and we'll get you more information. But you can go ahead and start circling your calendar for one of the final Fridays. I believe I set the date yesterday without anybody knowing it. Uh, <laughs> I've at least submitted August 23rd. If you want to kind of just think way ahead, I don't think management knows or anything, but I believe I put us down for August 23rd. If you want to think ahead to the uh, the August golf tournament that we will be, we will be back out here for uh, as well. 803-404-6100. So some college basketball news. I uh, thought something like this may happen with Eric Musselman. Moving on, just a lot of odd. It was an odd season for him. He's kind of an odd guy to begin with, He's taking his shirt off after the NCAA tournament wins and yelling at the fans and doing all this stuff. And he uh, moves on to Southern Cal and replace uh, Andy Enfield, who took the SMU job and moved into the ACC of uh, uh, Preston. But you're all for bringing people back. Who are you? Who are you ready to bring back? What? What character should take the, the Arkansas job? I mean, we already got Bobby Petrino back in the fold, right? Yeah. So, since we already know that morals or rules are not really anything that prevent us from hiring somebody, why not bring Will Wade back into the SEC? Just bring him back into the SEC? Why not? I mean, he's, he's a winner. He is a winner. <laughs> he he will, knows how to make offers. He will, he will get the job done. And, uh, you know, like I said, Arkansas is not above making this hire. So, I wonder – if that's going to be a call that's me. Is it a concern that Will Wade doesn't know how to shut his his uh, office door so that pe that his secretaries do do not hear him making said strong, leaping offers? Ah, <laughs> uh, listen. Or that he doesn't know how to walk outside during an important phone conversation. Yeah, you got to know how to make sure that there's just only two people involved in the conversation, or at least have it in person. Uh, that's, that's where he's struggling. But he's, I'm sure he's learned from his ways. I'm sure he's ready to advance. And to be very truthful and honest, I mean, the stuff that Will Wade was doing, you know, retroactively is almost legal yeah, now, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it really is. He's, he knows he's ahead of the game. Oh, trailblazer? He's ahead of the game. He saw what was coming down the pipe, and he got out in front of it. Got to got to like that. Got to, got to think of a man who's creative as Rock Lucas wanders through here. He's officially made his entrance this morning. It's like Tiger Woods wandering through when Tiger was at the peak of his game wandering through the clubhouse. Um, but And also, Rock is more like he walks with a purpose. Yeah, That's a man that has some stuff to do. You, you can always tell when the person's putting on the event. It's just like he, he had a clipboard in hand. He was like, moving with a purpose. Of being checked off the box. 803-404-6100 is uh, how you can weigh in on this. That was uh, the majority of... I'm curious, but I am, I am serious. I'm curious to see what happens. Uh, again, I guess it's only because, for me personally, now that we're in the SEC conversation, I guess I'm following a little bit more along with what's happening in the rest of the SEC as far as basketball is concerned. And so this is really curious to me. Yeah, as we wrap things up here, Alabama going to the Final Four. We wrap up the college basketball season 
I, I'm trying to put in perspective what the NCAA tournament did to the perception of the SEC in basketball this year. With with Auburn bailing out, obviously South Carolina going in the first round. Florida was knocked out in the first round. Mississippi State uh, was was bludgeoned in the first round by Michigan State. Uh, you also had obviously Alabama make their run. Tennessee made their run uh, as well. Kentucky goes down, but I think I feel like I always feel like Kentucky's its own entity when, when discussing. Uh, because they they have done it in March, and they're obviously a basketball brand name. But you go through the SEC and you look at what occurred there uh, with really the awful showing. Does it does it affect your perception of the SEC when you see Arkansas now having to make a move, maybe going out and hiring another big name coach to enhance the league? Where do they go? Uh, so I was trying to check the. The Arkansas board to see what was going on, and I saw Jerome Tang's name come up. Does that qualify as a big name coach, or does that qualify as a coach? They qualify well to me because I follow basketball very closely. It's such a big name that would be a huge hire. Okay, pulling him away from Kansas State that would be a fantastic hire for them. I, I think he actually fits them exceptionally well. Uh, the question is, is <laughs> It's unnecessary from off there, uh, but it, I, I think that uh, I, I think that's a, that would be a huge hire. Now, does it is, does it make a splash in the league? Uh, you know, from a national perspective, no, probably not. Probably not. Not not is it not? To, Will Wade would be the the national splashy hire because they're like, whoa, what do you try? So you really are all in on winning, huh? That it'd be kind of like, oh, you're gonna put Bobby Petrino and Will Wade in the same complex. You guys are firmly invested in winning. Maybe not in morals, maybe not in church, but you guys are all about the winning. That would make a big name. Jerome Tang would be a fantastic hire. I just, I don't know nationally if it, if it gets the SEC, because that's the thing. The SEC's got to do a little damage control here in terms of basketball after what just occurred. Can they appreciate that? Can they put the spin on it as we're such a good league that we beat each other up throughout the year? That's what we're trying to say in football. Can we try and Use that spin for basketball? Uh, I don't think so with the NCAA tournament. I don't think so. I, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I, I just, no, I, I think when you go in there, and again, it was Florida, if I'm just doing it very quickly without looking at it, uh, Florida, Mississippi State, South Carolina, Auburn, Kentucky, excuse me. Um, those five get eliminated in the first round in the manner in which they did. Uh, Texas A&M, Texas A&M won their game. So Texas A&M, Alabama, and Texas A&M, Alabama, and Tennessee all advance. So you get three and five in the opening round. No, I, I don't think I don't think you can sell it that way. You got to put the PR people to work, man. Got to figure out a way to sell get this the basketball. Out. Yeah, we, we got to figure out because they didn't perform. Get, get, uh, they didn't perform in the tournament, so we got to figure out a way to sell. Get Greg Sankey on the phone. Get the proper PR people uh, out there. 803-404-6100. We will roll along this morning live from Charwood Golf Club. It's the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament. The onion sausage has been delivered to us. It is on the grill. The mimosa bar is being fired up outside. Camp Discovery has arrived. we got a lot going on this morning as we get you up and going. The 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament. You're listening to Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne, Jen Jensen. It's the early game. Okay. What? Good. Yeah. 
Bill Gunner for the Acton Law Firm. That's right. Tax season is coming to a close, but that doesn't mean the IRS is slowing down. They're sending out their dreaded notices of intent to levy in 2024. And if you've received this notice from the IRS, you or your business may be in some trouble. But there is somebody there to help you. It's called the Acton Law Firm. John Acton and his team. They are a local team dedicated to resolving your income or business tax issues for good. So call today for a free consultation, 803-771-9800. That's 803-771-9800. The Acton Law Firm, they understand the challenges that you're facing, and that's why they're ready to help offer you the peace of mind that you deserve with proven local solutions. They've helped thousands of families and businesses just like yours escape the IRS maze and they're ready to help you. So give them a phone call today and tell them you heard it here with Bill Gunner, 803-771-9800. Again, call the Acton Law Firm today. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. If I see you come back out of the bathroom, we'll put Mary Beth on doing a little camp discovery. I thought you go in the bathroom. I didn't see you come back out. Pop on here for a second. Let's grab you a chair. Let's get you on. We'll talk. <laughs> it's, uh, it's talking. You got two kids, uh, a talkative husband. You know how to talk. Let me get you on just a second. And then, Maggie, if you can help Mary Beth. As far as I eat my. Did you get a did you get a roll up? Yeah. Just help her get set up with in just a minute. Um, okay. With whatever you think. Either honestly, do y'all have a tent or what do y'all have? Just a table. I'll show you. Maybe either out there underneath the where everybody will be. Okay. Or, well, there's a putting green there too. I tried to get my kids to come help me, and yeah, they wouldn't get off. And I was like, we didn't get what time? I was like, yeah. Yeah. It's early. It's 17-year-olds. <laughs> Rolling along live from Charwood Golf Club as we get you up and get you going here on a Final Four Friday. Women tonight. Reminder, you can hear right here on 107.5 The Game. We will have the pregame at 630 Tip time, 7 o'clock. And again, programming note, we will have the final four game here on 107.5, the game tonight. Uh, the baseball game, South Carolina and Texas A&M, will be on our sister station, 1320 ESPN AM tonight. Pre-game for that is 645. First pitch scheduled for 7 o'clock over at Founders Park, Gamecocks and Texas A&M. So, again, a reminder, if you're driving, if you're traveling, if you're out at a high school contest tonight and you're listening via radio, the – the basketball game will be on 107.5 of the game, pregame 6.30, tip time 7 o'clock. The baseball game will be on, uh, again, Texas A&M will be on 13.20 a.m., our ESPN station. So just FYI, programming note on that, schedule your listening uh, appointments accordingly. 803-404-6100 is always We're thrilled to have Camp Discovery out of Blythewood out here this morning. You can... Check out more information on campdiscoverysc.org is how you do it. 2024 camps are lining up, and I've now intimidated myself, Mary Beth, with your last name. I know your husband exceptionally well, and now I'm like, and we actually had this conversation because Joey was supposed to play in a golf tournament with us yesterday, yeah. and he couldn't do it. He's very busy spring break, I believe, for y'all as well, and traveling traveling around. Uh, but a, a discussion came up on, on last names, and it was Estes. Estes? Yeah, you got it. Or, and yeah, yes, because they said don't, don't say it wrong. They said, they yeah, they said they, they said it don't say, don't call Joey Bizzle, don't say it wrong. I said okay, <laughs> no problem. And I believe actually he's he's heading over to the Braves game tonight. 
Uh, we are. You are. I'm so excited. I can't wait. It, opening yeah. night, Spencer Strider throwing tonight. Yeah, let's go. It's, it's going to be fun. The Diamondback, you get to see Christian Walker, too, for him again, Cock. I can't wait. You guys are big Braves fans. Huge Braves fans. Our cat is even named Acuna. So, yeah, <laughs> nice. we, are, we are big Braves fans. Nice. So, yeah, we're all excited. The girls are, are packed and ready to go. So, as soon as we can hit the road this afternoon, we're going to head up that way. And we, we've talked about it. The, the, the battery over there, it's just an incredible experience with what they built. And if they could build something like that around williams Bryce Stadium. Oh, my gosh. That would be amazing. That's half the fun of it. I mean, I, right. you know, I love the Braves, but I kind of go for the pizza and the atmosphere and – Fun, so. It's going to be uh, no back back to uh, back in Atlanta tonight, and as you said, y'all are y'all are a huge Braves fan. So you're you're hanging out with us today, Camp Discovery out here with us, and let's start with some of the things y'all got going on. We got a, a little bourbon raffle today, and we've got a little putting competition we're going to have. Yeah, yeah, trying to raise some money for Camp Discovery. We're a nonprofit organization. We do um, field studies out in Blythewood. We're in 116 acres of natural habitat, so we bring the kids out to do STEM studies, so science, technology, engineering, and math. And obviously, it's out in nature, which is great. Kids spend a lot of tech time today and do not get outside very often, so we want to make sure that they get outside and they enjoy learning in an innovative way. So. Um, we bring them out for field trips, and then, like you said, we're pitching our wow. summer camp. So we have several summer camps. We're ready to roll. So if anybody wants to register, they can go to that website and get signed up. We have half-day camps, and then we have uh, full-day camps. We have a teen camp this year, which is a lot of fun because there's not a lot for that age group. It's rising sixth through ninth graders. So. Yeah, we're excited. If you want to learn more, you can go to campdiscoverysc.org. There is a, a camp uh, uh, tab at the top, summer camp registration. Uh, one of the first ones is really cool. June 3rd through the 7th, uh, it is NASA Discoveries Camp. Talk a little bit about that one. Yeah, so that one is actually restricted just to the NASA Discovery kids, but it is a really special program. And um, We have a partnership with NASA Globe Goes to Camp and NASA Discoveries is the program. Um, there are students from Richland, too. They get to come out. And because of events like this and donations that we get, those campers get to go to that camp for free. So we try to provide scholarships to kids that need it and make sure that they get the opportunities as well. So um, that camp in particular is, is funded by donations. So. Yeah, I, mean, I, I just can't be a, a big enough advocate for getting those kids outside into nature. When you yeah. see the kids, what's the process of them getting out there? Do you even see them sort of? Uh, grow and Absolutely. grow into the nature while they're out there. Yeah, and it can even happen in just a field trip. And I tell people this story all the time. But it, there was a student out there that he was an English language learner, so he didn't, you know, know every word exactly. Right, and he kind of held tight to me for a while. We started out on a hike, and we got about halfway through, and he started to loosen up a little bit. And he said, "Miss Mary Beth, I've never been on a walk like this." He didn't know the word for hike, but he was, and it was just so impactful because there are a lot of kids that don't get the opportunities to just get outside and to walk and explore and see animals. And, you know, we try to get them down into our creek and study microinvertebrates. And there's just so much opportunity out in nature to learn. So it's, it's really special out there. Basically, about every week there is a camp. Again, go to campdiscoverysc.org. One of them I see that's very popular is the Earth Keepers Camp, uh, 6 yeah. to 12-year-olds. You've got both half-day camps, 9 to 12, and a uh, camp in June 24 through 28 from 9 to 3. What is exactly the Earth Keepers Camp? Okay, so we just still do a lot of those science components, but obviously it's a camp, so we want them to have fun, too. So we get to incorporate um, some activities. We have a low rope course, which is a lot of fun. So they get to come out. We have a, a nitro swing and, you know, tire swings and all kinds of neat things in our low rope course. We have a gaga ball pit and a hammock forest. And so they get to do a little bit of learning and a lot of fun. So those are the best. <laughs> they are out here. Camp Discovery. Again, you can get more information. Go to their website, campdiscoverysc.org. That's how you can donate, be a part of it. You can also call out there, 803 754 2008. Again, that's 803 754 2008. And obviously, a lot of great things for the kids. We appreciate you being a part of our tournament today and coming out and, and uh, joining us for the fun. Can't wait. Awesome. Thank especially, you so much. Especially on a day uh, that you're heading uh, off to Atlanta to go catch great Braves. Real quick before you do that, next week, the Masters. You got to pick for the Masters? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm going on Monday. 
So she's going to a Braves oh, game. Did, did we, I know. Braves game did today. We? Masters on Monday. No. Uh, you got it. It's like my my sports friend. Hour hour three on the way. You're listening to the early game. I didn't hear the music. I didn't. We didn't have any music. But t- I had. Oh yeah, no, you're fine. I had it. I, I was watching the clock. I just, I was gonna when I heard the music, I was gonna hit the stopwatch. We're good. We're good. No, that's good. I don't want to make a pick for the masters, and I might be wrong. You what? I'm a woman. I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you make a pick. You gotta be wrong. Yeah, right. You gotta be sick. Right? Or you might be a genius to get it dinner. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, Maggie, you such. I would, I would set up to put you in the best location. I kind of read. Um, no, you're good. You're good. I was in a tournament yesterday, an LJ's tournament, and sure enough, we drank too much. Um, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna have Maggie set them up, but if you're doing the putting thing, yeah. the putting green is gonna stay or put it. So you could use that putting green too. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think I'm doing anything with it because it's just me, so I think I'm gonna be like running the bird around the back table. I would just set up. I would just set up my view. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right by registration. That way, you're right there when people walk up. Yeah. And uh, wherever Maggie is, she can yeah. get all set up. Okay. Great. Great. Yeah. yeah. If you need anything from me, let me know. All right. For sure. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. One more hour. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll do that here in a little while. Yeah. My buddy just sent this to you. What y'all doing, Mulligan? Mason Ivins said, Where's our registration table? Well, we're just going to check everybody in inside since everybody's already paid. I said, Well, they do Mulligan and all that stuff. Yeah. Or so or I'm gonna set up a table somebody sit out there. She was I, out there, Maggie, the little girl. So here. I'm setting up a table. She, she, she had a table she was setting up over there. But I don't know. Who I got to? Yeah, uh, yeah I, she might have gone out there, yeah. I hadn't had a chance to have it, but I will in a second. And I'm sure it will be great. Charge up in the sun. Hey, Jen. Yeah, we're going to have this guy on from Carolina Screen Printing. Um, as soon as I get his number, I'll forward it to you. And if we can honestly try and do it in this segment, like at about 7.08 or 8.08, I'll, I'll send it to you and just give him a shout and just give me a heads up that we got him. And we'll uh, go from there. Maggie, y'all good? 
Are you? I didn't know who's doing the registration table there. Right? No, no, like I didn't think about this, but I'm just waiting on Katie, and I think she's gonna get here in ten minutes. But I don't really know what. Okay, we're okay. We got a yeah. table set up out there. Well, right? there and there's Terry too. You can grab Terry. Hey, tell tell Terry to come here real quick. Yeah, right? just just. Off and running as always here on the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament as we are ready for a big day live from Charwood Golf Club. Bill Gunner, Preston Thorne, thank you to Mary Beth Estes for joining us there from Camp Discovery. Excited to have Camp Discovery out here. They'll have a nice big bourbon raffle going on here shortly. And we will uh, enjoy that today. We've also got some other stuff going on. Again, the onion sausage. The onion sausage is a flowing. I believe it is out there. We've gotten a couple of hours. The mimosa bar by Saki's Wine and Spirits is rolling along. So we've got a lot going on. We'll have Firehouse Subs taking place. Uh, their subs here later on for lunch and some golf. The we're Preston has said he's cold. So we may have to push back the ceremonial. No, 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 no. I'm, a, I'm a soldier. I'm, a, I'm, a I'm just gonna say push it back call. 30 minutes to nine o'clock. Oh, yeah, you're, 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 you're I, can get, I can get out there and do it. I just, I just said maybe I need to go sit in the sun for a little bit. We're not letting you off the hook on it. I was just gonna look out for you and say we'll move it back. It's, I'm a gamer. I, I can do it. <laughs> we'll, we'll just move it back a tad and, and have you do it. So. <laughs> Got to get that ceremonial tee shot in. You're the official starter of this thing. We can't. We it, we just have people out in carts if it wasn't for you. You know, hitting the ceremony, we'd just be standing around. So we'll we'll get to that. 803-404-6100 is how you can weigh in. York weighs in this morning on our live stream. He says, "Not afraid of Caitlin Clark and Iowa. Afraid of the subconscious urge to have a storybook ending and the potential part of the referees can play in that." And then he says, with that being said, just focus. Whack the pack tonight. So so game tonight, South Carolina and NC State. We talked a lot about that. Also baseball. Again, as I just mentioned, a programming note for those of you out there. Tonight, Final Four. Again, we will start Final Four coverage. Uh, we will actually have Elijah Campbell. We will technically start really Final Four. We started Final Four coverage at 6 a.m. But Elijah Campbell will join us here at 8.30 this morning from Cleveland. Uh, he is plane trained and automobiled his way up to Cleveland in the Rocket Mortgage Center. He, I think, slept outside of the arena last night, just hoping to be the first one in this morning. You know, Elijah does a great job. And like I said, the, the perils of being young and you can get on a plane and you can worry about your living situations later and all that stuff out Sadly, past that point in my life, I need to make sure everything's right and make sure the hotel's set up, all these types of things. So, shout out to Elijah doing the hard work. Now, Jen, you might be an expert. You might be an expert on that. Is can can I get rid of seven hours in O'Hare? Is that a is that a is there a worse place to do it, or is that okay? Okay. I, I, was, I was just thinking if Jen's going to get Jen and I have totally different ideas of what to do during a layover. Uh, if she's getting a flu shot, I would have. She's I would, improving her health, and you are. I, not I no, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Multiple way, well, in deep dish pizza and and yes, whatever, whatever festive bar activities. Chicago airport. Well, Elijah had to spend seven hours in the airport, but then early, they were on seven hours on the plane. So UConn had UConn had the mechanical, not failures yet, but the plane wasn't ready to go. They had to de ice the plane, and they were sitting on the runway for seven hours. you.
nothing more annoying, I would assume, than a passenger on the plane coming to you and telling you how to de-ice the plane. I, I would imagine few few things are more annoying in this world than somebody who works on planes does that being told uh, how to de-ice the plane. 803-404-6100. So anyway, we'll have a live camera coming up in about 24 minutes here this morning as we roll along live from Charwood Golf Club getting ready for the 107.5 game spring golf tournament, which is now less than two hours away from tea time. And again, a lot of covers today of the women's team and Preston. Again, we will, we will not um, do a show or at least I'm unaware of us doing the show. I will not be there. If we're doing the show aware prior to Sunday's championship game. But the big picture of this is what, what this tournament means for Dawn Staley's legacy. Um, Don Staley is going to go down as one of the best basketball coaches, men or women's, to ever coach. But there is a level, I think, of urgency to win this championship and add a third netless, I believe is how she says, and a third ring to her legacy. Yeah. Like I said, you have to win one to get in the club. But now that you're in the club, there's another room inside of that. There's two, then there's the multiples. And she's wanted to get into that space with. Uh, Pat Summit and Gino and be considered one of the greatest. And I saw somebody said this other day, thinking about Dom's legacy as basketball. If you was to say who was more influential, it was in the context of like Jerry West, as far as how influential he is to the game of basketball. Or if you think about Don Staley's legacy as far as playing, Olympics, coaching, WNBA, um, this is only just another aspect of what she's already done to um, submit the game of women's basketball, bring it to this level. It's only fitting that in this moment, sort of the ambassador of women's basketball can win one in this time. It would be, obviously, it would be her third. And there is a sense. I don't know where we draw the line as sports critiquers, as media, in, in becoming one of the best ever and just being a champion uh if that makes sense preston says, you know eli manning has two super bowl rings yeah. uh we we he was there for two of them i, I don't, <laughs> he was there for two of them you mean he took the snaps on two of them he was on the team okay yeah no, that's, but hey, with dawn it feels like two and again i don't know if this is a testament to how great she's been but it feels like two is just simply not enough. Not it's not what she had. a third. A third just I, like you said. I think you you described it well. It puts you in another tier. It puts you in another room. Yeah, you just get it. You just go and get into going to the the gold club or the platinum club, or wherever you want to call it. You get to go into the next room that they've been in. So everybody can come in here with the championship, but these folks from this next level are are put some put some there. And so three is three is undeniable. Three is undeniable. When you get to three, you start talking about dynasty. You start talking about dynasty. Uh, I'm looking. At it. I'm, I'm looking. And, and, and here's here's the other part to, to go up there and great skip. I'm looking at it so I know the answer. Do you know without, I don't know if you glanced at it, how many championships Pat Summit has? No. Eight. Eight is the, okay. the answer to that. Eight national championships, uh, 87, 89. 91, and then won three straight, 96 to 98. Then there was a, a nine-year hiatus, and then they won in 07 and 08. Um, that's, I guess, another reason I say that this is a really important one for Dawn. You had an undefeated season last year that came to a crash and halt. You'd have this season where you're undefeated, and it would. there's something about it that would feel hollow. I feel like if you have back-to-back -back undefeated seasons but yet can't bring home the national championship. And they're tough. And they're tough. They're tough. It's tough to go undefeated. It's tough to win a national championship. But there's something about that that just wouldn't feel right. Yeah, you got, this is the one that they would need to bring it home. And they're in the Final Four, which, again, I said is the accomplishment that they need to have. And now they have to go out and win two more games. As I stated earlier during the 6 o'clock, I'm more confident in the championship game than I am in this game. I, I, we got to get past, get through this one, win this game. And I feel like I like their chances against either Utah or Iowa in the next game. We've already smacked Utah up and down. We declared them over. We, we're taking that torch from them. And uh, the Caitlin Clark story has been nice. And the Iowa thing has been cool. But it's time to put that to them. 
Uh, just for the record, also, so Patson with eight, Gino Ariema with eleven national championships, sure. and and so that's that's which is, which is part of the conversation when they were talking about Caitlin Clark being the goat, and then I was like, well, there was a woman named Sue Bird and Maya Moore, Diane yeah. Ferrasi. They won lots of championships, so let's just maybe he slow down on that a little. 803-404-6100. That's how you can uh, weigh in if you want to do so this morning. We'll come back. We'll get into a little football, get back into some spring football. Uh, let you listen to a little bit more from Lonnie Teasley yesterday, uh, Sterling Lucas as well. A lot to get to here as we're rolling along. People are joining in. I see some people Some people have stopped working and are enjoying their, their onion sausage now. I just have have given up on doing the actual work. Brock Lucas will join us later on this morning. You're listening to Preston Thorne, Bill Gunner. She's Jen Jensen. It's the early game. <laughs> it's a, hey, it's going to that guy's voicemail. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll try like one more time. Yeah, like I. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because.
That is just drawing a, a small shaking of the head from Preston Thorne. What 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 causes the shaking of the head? Zero losses. Zero. Yeah. It sounded very clear. Very smooth. Yeah, very smooth. It's not like he had a uh, like quiet I'm, storm. I'm just that's baritone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, we don't want that. Get, get that out. We did. We need. We need a coach who's big yelling. Um, Sterling seems like he's had enough all spring. Like, guys, what are we doing? He seems like he's been screaming. Working with the daycare with, <laughs> with Coach Daly. Yes. Uh, Travis seems like he's everything. he's got everything under control. But he did mention something that I think was interesting, and you brought this up before. This is his first spring. He got hired late last year, only got a chance to work with him in the summer, and got thrown into the fire in the, su- in the, in the, the actual year. So for him to be able to go through a spring – and kind of be settled in is really interesting because this is really his first time to work with his guys in less of a pressure environment. To that point, how much does it benefit his guys to be able to go through just a 14 fundamental practices, hand placement, arm technique, all those hand thingies you do when you get all excited that he really didn't get to do last year because it was almost out of the gate. All right. We're in fall practice. we got to get ready for North Carolina. Yeah, it's very different modes because once you're into the season, you're not in teaching mode anymore. You're game planning. You're trying to evaluate guys. You're trying to put the best players in. You're not necessarily worried about exploring different techniques or learning. You're worried about producing. So in the spring, you get a chance to talk through your techniques, teach a little bit more, maybe take it a little bit slower, and maybe you get a chance to learn a little bit more about your players. 803-404-6100 803-404-6100 is how you can weigh in. Rock Lucas will join us here in a little while as we'll catch up with him and get all the goods of what's going on. We are live from Charwood Golf Club, the 107.5 The Game Spring Golf Tournament taking place today. I do want to tell you about my good buddies at Mid-State Roofing. It's a beautiful day today. You don't need to worry about your roof today, but summer thunderstorms are on the way, and at that point, you're going to need – to worry about your roof. So have you got a maintenance contract lined up? If not, call Mid-State Roofing today, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 803-356-1919. Mid-State Roofing will make sure you are taken care of and that you have leak detection and leak prevention. And again, they've been the leader in the roofing industry for nearly 30 years. So Mid-State Roofing is ready to help you and take care of you today. Again, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you can give them a phone call and they are there to get you in a maintenance contract. It may be an employee, it may be an on-call technician, but Mid-State Roofing is ready to help you. Make that phone call today. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you 803-356-1919. That's how you get in touch with Mid-State Roofing. If you've got a leak, let Mid-State Roofing take a peek. We come back, we'll be joined by Elijah Campbell. On the road, our roving reporter, poor guy, slept in Slept on a bench probably in the airport. I was going to say sleeping bag, but I don't think he totes a sleeping bag. Probably just slept on a bench. His hair is all messed up. He's already lost his shoe. But he's made it to Cleveland. And he's young. And he's young. He can do it. Y'all remember what it was like to be young. Elijah Campbell joins us from Cleveland, the NCAA Tournament Women's Final Four. That's when we come back. You're listening to the early game. <laughs> all right. That was that mid state. Bill Gunner for AAA Heating and Air. I tell you what, it is that time. You heard Jen mention it. It might get into the 80s on Monday. That means turning the air conditioner back on. And are you ready to turn the air conditioner on? You need to be. And with AAA Heating and Air, they'll make sure it is in great working order. Call today. You can even get a free replacement estimate if you've been thinking about doing a replacement heating and air unit. And if you're worried about cost, don't be. AAA Heating and Air right now is running an incredible deal. No payments, no interest until 2025. You can go all to 2024 without paying a penny. So call AAA Heating and Air today, 803-677-1500. Again, that's 803-677-1500. Call AAA Heating and Air. They've taken care of me and my family, put in a great unit last year. It was fantastic during the summer, kept the house nice and cool. They'll do the exact same for you. 803-677-1500. Call AAA Heating and Air today. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. Like I'm kind of playing without a net at times here. Just without, the, without Nolan, and then, then just it's kind of like, all right, is somebody else going to pop up when we go in? Yeah. 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 
this way, this or something kicked out. Yeah, yeah, all of a sudden I'm going to like the shaky almost. Oh, yeah. You weren't making it. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to meet you, Tony. I think so. I don't know. I, I can see them rolling along, going in, getting up. That's what it was. I think I think they go out and just wear them out. Yeah, it could be it could be a wrap for them if they get out they get out on the break. Yeah. If you remember the game when they were, when we were watching the Iowa game last year, you just had that feeling that was I mean, it just kind of never, never got on track. It was kind of like how was the upstart last year, and you didn't take them serious. And you're like, look at this, this one girl. You know. Yeah. Except running, except running a pick and roll. I was like, all right, all right, we're gonna we're gonna stop it sometime. Uh, I've seen Brooke wandering through. <laughs> I saw, like I said, I saw Brooke, but they might be running all over. Hey, we got this uh, final four segment. Then you want to hop on about eight forty, about eight forty-eight final segment. I'm good. A little chilly, but good. Uh, you say you're going to try and call him? Okay. Eight thirty-three. Here as we slowly start to wrap things up on the morning episode. Here, Tyler will get you through. Terry Ford will get you through later on. Jay Phillips will do whatever it is Jay Phillips does. Kind of, I'm sure he'll talk some fish and a few other things. Jay, you know, his his Fridays in April are reserved for uh, Premier League soccer and fish concerts. Really, not a fish guy. I couldn't name a song. <laughs> You don't have to because it's all one long song. The whole band could walk in here. I'd be like, oh, cool, more people for the tournament. I have no idea who they are, what music they play. I don't even know a lyric out of there. And, and I honestly think I'm kind of grateful for it, to be honest. 
I'm kind of happy about myself. 803-404-6100. Out to the Love Chevy phone lines where we go. We go up to, yes, no, we go up, we go up to Elijah Campbell up in Cleveland. Uh, Elijah, how you doing this morning, sir? I'm doing very well. It occurred to me, do the, do the word and letter combination East 1999, does that mean anything to you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I'm just checking. Does that mean anything to you? Dogs and Harmony. There you go. See, we're doing age yeah. That was just a demo. That was just a demographic check. Uh, East 1999 is very synonymous with the seminal hip hop group Bone Thugs and Harmony, who would sing those street crossroads, yes. I guess. Crossroads, crossroads, yeah. So yeah, from Cleveland. I just wanted to just I just think about that yesterday. But anyway, final four. How you doing today, sir? Oh yeah. Uh, I I do have a feeling. I have a feeling it might be uh, you had to be there type of thing. I'm not sure if it's gonna hold up over time. Well, I, I might send some stuff. I'll send some stuff to you. Yeah, it is. I, I think Bone Thugs they they hold up. They they but they there was what about there's two mainstream songs. Two mainstream songs, Wake Up and uh, and Crossroads. And I might be forgetting a third. Uh, I might be forgetting a third. But, yeah, I, I actually, uh, Alexa used to, I used to play Wake Up on Alexa. Uh, like, I'd come downstairs and have it going at 520 in the morning. But uh, neither here nor now, neither here nor now. Uh, as Jay Phillips says, uh, we digress. Let's let's get back to what what we're actually here to talk about, and that is tonight's final four again. What is it like up there? Give me the vibe around the arena. Give me the vibe kind of uh, around the city when you get into this, because you've got Gino Ariema, huge personality. You have Caitlin Clark, right now the star of the game. You have Dawn Staley, the coach of the game. Like this is a really good final four from a from a personality standpoint, not just a team standpoint. So what's the vibe up there? I asked Preston this, and I kind of will ask you the same thing. What do you, if you're South Carolina, and we can do this because again we're media. If you fast forward past tonight's game, uh, and you don't worry, we don't worry about it. Who do you prefer? Do you prefer beating up on Kate? Do you prefer getting Caitlin Clark back in a revenge game, or do you for, prefer getting Connecticut? Connecticut is not what they were uh, 10, 12, 14 years ago. But Preston's got a point. There is a level of beating Connecticut for a national championship, which basically I think, if you haven't already, it cements your status as the program in women's college basketball. You become the program by, by again, taking down what was once the big bad bully on the block.
What the heck? Oh, it's a baby. One brain's baby. Really? Yeah. My girlfriend's baby. Long season, right? Long season. There you go. That's what you say when you get in the house. Exactly. Like the last couple of years. Slowly move yourself over your head. I just want to say that Busy Bone is the Caitlin Clark of Bone Thugs and Harmony. So if you're trying to get into Bone Thugs and Harmony, make sure you understand that Busy Bone is first, and then maybe you have uh, also, you know, as our texter points in, you cannot forget about the notorious thugs, the co collaboration with Biggie and uh, Bone Thugs on the Life After Death album. It was tremendous. So it's just something you might want to just be, just to get yourself in the Cleveland spirit um, while you're while you're walking around there today. However, you, you, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the gentrification situation is, but I would imagine you probably don't want to go to East 1999. I just, yeah, my, yeah, you probably stay away from that part of town. Seems like a wise, wise choice. There you go. It's best. Yeah, there you go. Live, live vicariously through the computer. Uh, Iowa and Connecticut tonight. It, this is odd. South Carolina is an 11 point favorite. Connecticut is a two point underdog tonight. It does feel like South Carolina is the JV game a little bit. Is that the vibe you get up there as well, that the Gamecocks, in fact, are kind of the JV, just uh, everybody get in, get your popcorn, get settled uh, during that game because the, the main event happens with Iowa and Connecticut? Thanks, man. Yeah, I think it's Oh, Morgan Wallen's opening for Luke Bryan. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, okay. Good uh, nine hour nine iron reference as well. They're given to who you're playing golf today. Uh, before we let you go, I'll ask both of you this real quick about a minute and a half. Uh, how shocked are you? One, two, four, five, five being the most. Connecticut pulls off the upset tonight. They're only two and a half point underdogs, and it is still Connecticut. How shocked would you be, Preston? Not shocked at all. One. 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 You, I'm not shocked at all. You following through on that, uh, 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 Elijah? You going, you shocked or one or what? Way to, way to completely not play the game. One, two, four, five, and he doesn't, he doesn't even give me a, gives me a three and a half. There's four numbers to choose from, and he doesn't even give me. Okay. Okay. Uh, Elijah, when you listen to Notorious Thugs, the urban legend is that Busy Bone did that verse in one take. So just just keep that in consideration as you do. Yes, we. Mm -hmm. yep. we that's, will, that's a solid. We will follow up with you on Monday for for more Notorious Thugs information as Preston Thorn has it in his wheelhouse. Elijah, be safe. Find your lost shoe, and glad you made it safely. At a boy, safe travels. Elijah Campbell uh, up there in Cleveland. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up. Rock Lucas will join us. We'll laugh. We'll giggle. And well, we won't cry. We'll watch Preston Thorne hit the ceremonial opening tee shot. It's the early game.
Oh, there you go. Left us. You want to hit bomb? <laughs> a bomb. I'm going to bomb. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to bomb. Hit a bomb on the field. Yeah, it's a very odd. Uh, <laughs> I think every university does that. That's how it, that's how it works. <laughs> Some, some poor girl making $3 an hour. Just going through a list of names. I know. And I always try and think about that. Yeah. Right. Like, it's not what I'm always doing. What's up, man? Like, oh, man. Yeah, I'm always like, man, this, this is, she's just doing her job. Stop calling. Very bad. Very bad. I am at work. I am freezing. I went on the radio. Just to see what you were wearing. I said, it must be nice out here. Hey, man. No, I'm, I'm cold. What's that? All right. That's true. I, I was trying to think of who that was. Is that you getting off the cerebral shot? Yeah, probably hearing about it. Preston, are you playing with anybody today? No. You can take my spot. No, thank you. We would have fun. <laughs> Russell hits two t two shots a year. Two shots. Yep. This is this is one. Two's coming in. Gunner for Mid State Roofing. Again, beautiful day out here at Charwood. It's going to be a lot of fun, but rain will be in the forecast sooner or later. Is your roof ready for rain? If not, it's time to call Mid State Roofing today and speak with one of their on. All technicians, 803-356-1919. That's how you can get in touch with Mid-State Roofing. They've been the commercial leader for nearly 30 years in the roofing and waterproofing industry, and they are ready to take care of your roof today. Again, that's why they have a 24-hour day, seven-day-a-week call center, 803-356-1919. That's how you can get in touch with them. That's how they will put you in a maintenance contract, get you a little bit of leak detection and leak prevention. So don't wait a day longer. Call Mid-State Roofing today, 803 Three five six nineteen nineteen. If you've got a leak, let Mid State Roofing take a peek. Rain ball, good. Rain ball. Rain ball. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You can bring it right here. You just set it right there. You hit the Take your time again. <laughs> Wrapping it up this morning from Charwood Golf Club. We were the first ones. Well, okay, not the first ones out here. One of the original first ones out here this morning. Rock Lucas. What time did you get out here and start preparing the course for us? Uh, the guys, oh, wait a minute. Let me turn your mic on so that you can actually, people will know what you're saying. There, okay, now. You talking about me or the uh, guy? Yeah, you're, I mean, come on, your head grounds well, crew. I didn't, get any, I didn't get any text pictures of you this morning sitting outside in the cold. So, uh, Bill was here at 5.30. I think he unlocked the doors at 5.30. Uh, maintenance would have been here probably about 5.15, 5.20. Is that, is that running a golf course now and everything that goes into it? Is that it's a daily thing for y'all to, to be here to get the greens 
rolled or cut to to get the pole the pin placement down every day but thanksgiving and christmas and we still have to ride the golf course too in case you got irrigation blowouts or vandalism or something like that but so those are two days we closed other than that it don't matter whether 10 people play the golf course or whether 210 play the golf course it's the same thing <laughs> rock luke is joining us uh owner of uh charwood golf well, thank you again for having us out man we look forward to it today uh, how has golf in South Carolina been here to start the year? It's been uh, odd weather, but uh, I would say relatively good weather. Golf, yeah, golf is good. What, this year has been uh, brutal on the weather. I mean, we're way, way behind. And, and I was sitting in a room full of some business people the other day and said that we're about the only business. That, uh, there's not a whole lot of businesses that if it rains, you can't get back. It's gone. So it's a perishable item. So you can't play twice tomorrow to make up for the rain today. today. So we're uh, a couple thousand rounds behind last year. Uh, just 100% due to the weather. Really? Yeah. How is the how is the weather impacted? I know last time we were right here, you were talking about uh, kind of uh, dealing with growing of the greens and the weather, and I think you had a little bit of a flooding issue that you got fixed. But how no, is the weather? The golf course is in excellent shape. It's just a battle. It's just, you know, just what, a battle. You, you're going to have to go past tents. Preston, <laughs> and, and I believe some of our other golfers today may change that. <laughs> so, it, uh, you know, if you look every weekend, it's been – uh, it's rained about every weekend, and then you also look at the cold. And so this morning when you came in, we're down in the bottoms here, so this will be several degrees cooler than if you just go 500 yards to the right up top of the hill either way. So it's a whole lot colder, which is a little more challenging to get the grass kicked in in the spring but because we're going to get later frosts than most people, cooler temps at night than most people. But uh, but we're ahead of where we were last year. You hear that? There's plenty of time for you to get it. It means people have been practicing, Preston. <laughs> You might be middle of the pack right now. So they're a thousand rounds behind, and I'm right behind them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told them earlier, I said, they said, well, what does Preston need? I said, he has two shots a year, one in the spring and one in the fall. <laughs> it's true. It's true. And he's, he's geared up. We'll get the uh, the ceremonial opening tee shot here uh, within the next 15, 10, 15 minutes here as we wrap up this program. Uh, real quick, some golf-related uh, news. Uh, John Rahm, some other live golfers coming out this week saying they've got to get the PGA and the live together here relatively soon that just fan interest seems to be dwindling. Your thoughts on that? Don't get me. <laughs> we only got about three minutes. So. <laughs> yeah. I don't really care what they do. Uh, it don't affect our lives. It don't affect our operations. It don't affect public golf. Um, you know, it's it just viewership in golf. And, you know, I, like most people, I watch the majors and stuff like that. But other than that, it's like, you know, I own a pizza restaurant. You don't eat pizza every day and every night for supper. So, um, but it's, I just can't. I'll, I'll say what the hypocrisy of, <laughs> of we're not going to take your money, but yet we're going to take your money. <laughs> right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll not say anything controversial yeah, on I'll air. Uh, fine. We'll ask you something else. You're a big baseball fan. I know you and, and Ricky Smith normally get together and uh, y'all hang out and go to Coach uh, Coach Kingston's call in show. Uh, baseball, huge series this weekend against Texas A&M. Yeah, they got to turn around. You know, you're going to not. Years ago, I remember talking to Derek Scott one day. He said, well, Rock, you know, those midweek games, those, those guys are throwing their ace uh, pitchers. You know, they're doing everything they've got. They're throwing the whole kitchen sink at you on midweek. And you've got to somewhat save uh, some of your lineup for the weekend. So, you know, do you say, okay, hey, I'm going to throw everything at Georgia Southern, or am I going to hold off and throw everything at Texas A&M? So, you know, there's, you want to beat Georgia Southern, but at the same time, I understand those guys are throwing everything they've got midweek. Uh, still, as Preston said, it was it was made worse because it was on television. You couldn't. <laughs> That's the only reason why. I mean, obviously, you don't want to lose that game, but because people could see it, yep. a lot more eyes were on it, and it's probably a bigger deal than it actually was. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But yeah. That's what it is, though. Uh, the the other part of the weekend, women's basketball uh, tonight, North Carolina State. Uh, I've said we are allowed to look past the game. We don't have to play tonight. So I will skip North Carolina State and your thoughts on that and go directly to who would you rather play on Sunday? Would you rather get Iowa in a revenge game or would you rather take down Connecticut because it would just feel like you've actually accomplished? I you've got to go Iowa. You've got to go there. I mean, now that's not the best matchup. So we, that's going to be a right. little more competitive game than what we would like. And I talked to a couple experts and they said, no, we don't want Iowa again. We don't want them again. I said, well, I do because that's, you know, and if I'm gone, you know, I guess you know you can say it two ways. One, I want to share a national championship, which is not for sure, um, or I want to prove that I can beat them. I, I can tell you, Don wants, and I, I'm not saying this because I spoke with Don. I'm just going back to what Don said about that. What was it? The uh, the Indiana game in uh, was it last week where she remembered the loss down in the Bahamas? 
if she remembers that one from about seven years ago, I'm pretty certain she remembers last year's game. Would love to get uh, I will, another, I will not another shot to, to just to do defensively what what is different. So, man, we appreciate you having us out. Uh, fantastic day. You mentioned it, uh, and you guys are set for a great spring and summer out here. Yep. Yep. Everything we've got a great staff, a great crew. I mean, most of them have been with us for a long time, and the new ones we hire personalities. We try to hire personalities, and you train them to do everything else. And so we got a great crew, and uh, we got a great customer base, and we appreciate y'all being out here, and appreciate our staff, and appreciate everything y'all must do for you. Again, big thank you to Charwood Golf Club today, Old Timey Meat Market for the onion sausage that was delicious. Firehouse Subs shortly, Camp Discovery out here today, Saki's Wine and Spirits. Got a lot going on, Preston. Doc, you'll be here himself. He might be signing some autographs. Nice. Oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. The champions on the other side. I got I got Corley Pools real quick, and then we're out. Yeah. Bill Gunner for Corley Pool Solutions. Yeah, a little chilly this morning. Probably not thinking about jumping in a pool right now, but you will be in just a few months when that summer heat hits. You're going to want to come home in the afternoon and jump in your pool. It better be clean. You don't wait till then to start maintenance. Start maintenance today and contact Corley Pool Solutions. For nearly 20 years, Tracy Corley has been maintaining pools around Lexington, Chapin, and Lake Murray, and he is the absolute best in the business. And guess what? He's also the most affordable. Corley Pool Solutions believes in providing the absolute highest quality swimming pool service at the most affordable price to you and your family. And using Corley Pool Solutions, again, is more affordable than you trying to maintain it yourself. Plus, you'll save valuable time. You'll be allowed to relax and swim in your own on pool. So contact Corley Pool Solutions today. 803-445-8109. That's how you can reach Tracy Corley and Corley Pool Solutions. Again, 803-445-8109. Contact Corley Pool Solutions. Tell them Bill Gunner sent you. All right. Tyler is here and ready to go and we are stepping aside. Excellent work. We got through it. Dude, I'm freezing. I've had like three sips. It is. I don't know why. I don't know why. Preston, Preston all of a sudden brought up. All right. I'm signing off the live stream.